So it's another time when Arianet decided to release a new update. And on the 17th, sorry, not on the 17th, on the 16th of May 2017, they released another patch, uh, balance patch. And you guys know me that I do a lot of condition damage build, right? And so in this patch, they did have um, some, they did produce some of the changes that have significant impacts on some of the builds that I have recently made. And so I like to combine all of the changes into a single video with a timestamp uh, underneath the descriptions so that if you are not playing a, a certain class, so for example, if you don't like uh, Elementalist and you only play, let's say, a Necromancer, then you don't have to waste your time watching the whole full video. You can just click on the timestamps uh, on the um, Necromancer on the class that you play. So that will be the format that I'm going to produce going forward. If you have any feedback for me, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. And I also will talk about briefly, just briefly touch on some of the builds that did not receive any you know, changes or did not receive any significant um, changes that have an impact onto the build itself. So in that case, I will just briefly touch on to them and then moving on to the next one. So that will be the format going, from now, going forward from now on. All right, so um, without further ado, I would like to talk about some of the uh, class, uh, some of the builds that did not have any impact, uh, that, that did not receive any changes uh, from the patch itself first, and then I'll be moving on to some other builds that receive significant changes. So to start off first, these are the class, uh, these are the builds, or actually the classes, uh, condition damage build that I have recently made that are not being impacted by this patch at all. So starting off with a uh, engineer. Engineer in this patch, they are receiving a turret update, which is not really, you know, affecting the uh, condition damage build that much because in the condition damage build, I am using the flamethrower and also I'm using the bomb and the grenade kit. And so turret builds, they, yes, they do have some significant impacts onto the PvP aspect. But for the general PvE, the one that I'm currently using, the Condition Damage build, it has no impact. The second one is the Guardian. Now the Guardian, they, they have made some uh, significant increase in the signet of the Guardian. But that signet is in relation to the Berserker build. And also onto more of a survivability of the Guardian. So for example, the signet of Judgment, the signet of Courage, and so on and so forth. But in the build that I have produced for the Burn Guardian, these won't have any impact on the Burn Guardian at all. And the last one, uh, actually not the last one, but the second to the last one will be the Mesmer. Now in this update, what we are going, what they are doing is to revise the uh, power, power, power base shadow builds. This one is one of the classic builds for the Mesmer, and it's quite effective in the, in the PvP game mode. But again, I'm doing general PvE, and the build that I can, that I recently produced for the Mesmer was uh, the condition damage of the Mesmer. So again, it has no impact at all. And the last one will be the Warrior. Now the Warrior, they have received significant changes for the uh, PvP aspect, which is uh, utilize the X mastery and also for some of the skills that allows you to survive more and also some of the changes uh, that has some significant impact on the PvP side. But again, I don't know, uh, you know, it has no impact on the general PvE. And the only thing that I can actually see that might have a slight impact is the headbutt. The casting time of this skill has been increased from 0.5 seconds to 0.75 seconds. Distance travel has been increased from 300 to 400. So yes, it has some impact so you can travel uh, so you don't have to actually be a little bit close to the target to activate the headbutt. You can be a little bit further. And, but, the but the thing is that the casting time of the skill has been increased from 0.5 to 0.75. But overall, for the PV PVE aspect, and in particular the condition damage build that I have produced in one of my videos, um, it did not have a lot of impact. Uh, it did not receive a lot of you know uh, significant impact. So that's why I only touch on it briefly. And that would be it for the uh, classes that did not have did not receive any changes or you know has received a minor change. And so moving on, uh, moving on to the next one, I'm now will be talking about some of the classes uh, that have significant impact onto the condition damage build. 
So for the elemental list, I'm gonna keep it short. The reason for that is because uh, this patch has a lot of chances for the PvP. But for the purpose of this video, is a PvE only. And the condition damage elemental list has received a minor change. So I don't see the point of dragging it, you know, for you know 10 minutes or so. So let me just quickly touch on the drag breath, which is your second skill or the dagger. This skill now increases the burn duration to four seconds and increase the overall damage by 14 seconds in PvE only which is great because now you have the ability to apply uh, you know you apply the condition down uh, the burn condition damage and that lasts longer and increase your overall damage as well so that's really good the second one is um, one of the utility skill which is the glyph of elemental power elemental power reduce recharge to 25 seconds now gives five set five charges instead of using five second cooldown interval decrease duration to 25 seconds reduce burning duration to one stack for three seconds change cripple condition to one stack of bleeding for six seconds and uh, change the quick the weakness condition to four stacks of vulnerability for five seconds and so a lot of changes but um this I use this Glyph of Elemental Power situational. So whenever I'm doing the meta events in the Hearthstone maps, I'll be using the Glyph of Elemental Power instead of Signal of Air. The only reason why I'm using the Signal of Air is because of the movement speed. That's just my preference. I just prefer to move from one place to the other faster when I'm doing uh, when I'm bouncing between huts. So as you can see in here, that I'm you know standing in the Gendarans field map and so if I want to move from this hut to that hut and if I don't have the waypoint I prefer to have an increase in movement speed and that's just my preference so feel free to adjust whenever you like alright so that's it for the uh, elementalist I don't see the point of dragging that, this one out any further so let's move on to the um, other classes now for the revenant I think it would be more appropriate for me to talk about the uh, chances that I have made to the revenant in a separate video the reason for that is because uh, in this patch, they have revamped the condition damage aspect of the Revenant and I haven't made a video in regard to the condition damage of the Revenant before. The only video that I have made uh, a couple of months ago was in regard to the Berserker build that has the boon support to uh, your allies. But this time, they make a big change to the uh, condition aspect and I think that it deserves to have a separate video and so I'll be making that instead. So for now, I'd like to just move on to other classes because this section of the Revenant will be covered in a separate video. The Condition Ranger in this patch has been receiving a couple of buffs for the short bow and also reduce in the effectiveness of the torch. So for the bonfire, let's cover the nerf first. The bonfire of the torch offhand has been reduced in the duration of the burning from 3 seconds to 2.5 seconds. For this one, the throw torch, the duration of the burning applied by the skill has been reduced from 6 seconds to 5 seconds. So, reduce in the duration means the damage over time will be reduced uh, as a result because condition damage, the longer it stays on the target, the more damage over time that it would deal. So, having the re a reduction in the duration, that means over time you are dealing less damage. But I, I think that I can live with the um, reduction in this one because 3 seconds to 2.5 seconds for bonfire. Yeah, it's zero and a half seconds. I, I can live with that. And for the throw torch, the cooldown is twelve seconds, and the duration that it has it will be staying on the target is five seconds after the nerf from six. I think I'm okay with that. It's you know it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really you know negatively strongly negatively affect your uh, your damage. So I think I, I'm okay with that. The other changes that I have made is in regard to this one and I consider this to be a minor. So this ability right here allows you to increase your ferocity which is critical damage uh, when you wield your axe in either hands. So initially I was having the axe on my main hand because I want to use the ability of the winter bite because the winter bite provide you with the bleeding and having this attribute right here it will turn that one into an AOE and the X skills recharge faster so all of these skill the three skill in your main X will recharge faster so I'm okay with having this increase in ferocity critical damage which is uh, more tailored to the berserker build so uh, this is not that benefit for the condition damage but 
you know, having extra stats is always good. Now, the next one, I am... Oh, where is it? Yeah, light on your feet, crippling shot, and poison volley. These three are for the short ball. Now, light on your feet, this threat now enhances flanking behind aspect for your short bow skill. So as you can see in here, all of your short bow skill, uh, ideally the mechanic of the condition ranger is, uh, if you want to deal the most out of your damage, you have to stand behind or on the side of the target. And now seeing that light on your feet, which is one of the attribute, it enhances the flanking and behind aspect for the short bow skill. So all of that has been improved. So that's really good. But Again, you have to stand on the side or behind the target to make the most out of your damage. And the same principle applies for the poison volley, which is your second um, your second weapon skill. This one, this threat now enhances the effect if you are beside your target in addition to when you are behind your target. So on the side and from behind. If you look at the uh, description itself, you can see that attack from behind would deal 11, roughly about like 11 seconds. Uh, for that 11 second durations, you deal 12,730 damage. And this one, you see that it's, it's, it's a lot, right? Nearly 13,000, that is because I'm having the might at the maximum amount right here. So yeah, having that is really good, but you have to position your, yourself well before you can make the most out of your damage. Now, the last one that they buff for the weapon skill is the crippling shot. This now, this, this threat now immobilizes if you are beside, in addition to when you are behind your target. So in some of the high-end contents, you are required to respond to a certain mechanic by immobilizing a single target foe from approaching the NPC or approaching a certain location. And so having this one, you have the ability to uh, have, oh, actually you have an extra immobilized skill at your disposal so you, that you can use uh, to respond to that mechanic and I always welcome that. So the last one that I think that it can have an impact on to the condition ranger is in, re in regard to the refined toxins. The refined toxin reduce the effective cooldown from 10, 10 seconds to 5 seconds and also um, reduce the required health threshold from 90 seconds to 75 seconds. Now, yes, I I see that it has potential, but I am still prefer having this one right here because as part of your rotation, you are constantly swapping between your short bow and your axe, uh, your, your main weapon, your axe and your torch. And whenever you are doing that, when you are using your torch, right, you have an increase in 150 points of your condition damage. And to further add, your torch has a reduce in the cooldown. And so I still, I am still prefer having this over the refined toxins. Yes, I can see the potential that it has, but I still prefer to have this over this, yeah because of what I just said earlier, increasing condition damage, 150 points is a lot. And also reduce the recharge in the um, in the cooldown of your two most used skill of the torch is always good to have. Um, I have been receiving a lot of um, messages that, you know, why are you using trapper expertise? And sometimes I see that you swap to the sapling edges. And sometimes I see that you use the sapling stone. And sometimes I see that you use uh, other traps. Well, to answer that question, I like to swap my um, swap my attribute to respond to sudden gameplay. So, for example, if I am facing a lot of mobs and I know for the fact that th they will be coming after me, so in the meta events or in the open map, you will be facing with a lot of mobs. So, in that in that situation, I swap to the trap of expertise and I will be swapping to the spy trap because the spy trap you can drop it in the middle of, of you know in the middle of the map. And on the ground, whenever the mobs coming after you, they will be inflicted um, by your bleeding condition damage. And the same principle apply for the other trap as well. But that is because I know that there are going to be a lot of mobs coming after me. And so it's good for me to deal damage to all of them at once. 
Now, if I am facing a single target like, like at the moment I'm facing this massive kidney golem right here, I will be swapping to the sharpening edges. And I will be swapping this one to sharpening stone. The reason for that is because I see no reason for me to have this spy trap. Because the spy trap, yes, it does deal uh, sick bleeding stacks, but the cooldown is 45 seconds. And the sharpening stone, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, and you have the ability to deal 10 stack of bleeding. And so, for a single target, sharpening stone and sharpening edges combinations takes priority over the spy trap. So, just a little bit a clarification on why am I why you see me using this uh, variations of my build uh, to respond to certain mechanic. So I hope that, you know, I hope that helps. And I'll be moving on to other class right now. Thanks. So for the Necromancer in this past, I have seen a lot of negativities going around. It's because um, they have reworked the epidemic skill. Now, epidemic skill, hang on, let me just pull off the pad so that I am not saying anything um, that can be misinformed to you guys. All right, so here it is. This ability now fires a slow acting projectile from its initial target to up to five targets in range. Foes hit by the projectile's gains or condition damage from the original epidemic target. Projectile strikes are now unblockable but cannot critical hit increase radius to 900. Now, initially, I was gonna release a video uh, for the update one day uh, after the patch went live but then i waited until now to release it because i have seen a lot of fixes going on with the epidemic some re people report to arianet that epidemic is when you cast a skill if a body blocking another another target in front of it and body blocking then you won't be able to apply you know all of the condition damage from the epidemic skill and then there's another one that when you apply the epidemic uh, epi, when you cast the epi skill, I'm just gonna call it epi for short now. When you cast the epi skill, it actually reflected back onto you and you can die instantly. And then there's another bug that's going on around that the condition damage do, will not transfer to the fifth target or the fifth missile. The missile fire from this ability is not there. And so there's a lot of fixes going on with the epidemic skill. And I think that for now, I will just talk about the uh, what I very pleased about the elite skill. And for the epi skill, I think that I will leave it for another time because there's a lot of fixes going on at the moment. And even when I'm making the video now today, uh, a few hours ago, they actually make an upgrade. I'm sorry, not an upgrade, but a bug fix. And the bug fix was uh, fix a bug that cause conditions to not transfer on the fifth missile. The missiles fired from this ability will now piece target already struck by the skill, removed the new functionality that cause condition durations to affect newly transfer conditions. That is coming from the epidemic skill of the latest patch from uh, Mark, the content marketing managers. So I can see that it has a lot of uh, fixes going with the epidemic skill and i don't think that it will be appropriate for me to comment on the skill right now uh, because this has a lot of changes going on at the moment even as we speak right now even as i speak right now so i will leave the epidemic comment for the later time i will put it down in the link in, sorry not not the link but i will put my comment down in the descriptions or i can you know um highlight my comments so that you guys can see uh, what are my thoughts later on? So for now, I would like to leave the epidemic comments for uh, for the later time. So what I please about this patch in regard to the Neko is that they reworked one of the Alice skill, and that Alice skill. Uh, let me just pull up the spell for you because I keep on bouncing around with the text that I receive. Okay, so that's the skill that I have right here, the black. Initially, this skill was the name of the skill was black, and you transform yourself into a mystical being, and you cannot cast any, you know, uh, of your initial skill or utilities, and you just keep on bouncing the condition damage 
you know, uh, for I can't remember the exact amount of time, but I think it was like roughly about 30 seconds. I think it's been a while since I used this skill. But anyway, now that I have reworked this skill, like lands, now this skill will create a radius 240 radius. So I think it will be more uh, appropriate for me to cast this skill in the middle of the road so that you can see. Um, let's use this one actually. Yeah. I think that actually, yeah, yeah, it's will be a good idea for me to use it on these. This is gonna pull them in. All right, now I'm gonna cast this skill, 240 radius, right, and it will keep on bouncing, applying condition damage to all of them. See, it will apply, it will keep on bouncing, posing, and applying condition damage. So the orders are: first one bleeding, second one poison, third one torment. Then vulnerability, cripple, weakness, blight, chill, and burning. Burning will be the last. So the condition damage that can actually damage the targets are the first three: bleeding, poison, torment, and the last one, burning. And the recharge is fixed to 120 seconds. But I have one of my spells that allows to have the reductions in the cooldown. So as you can see in here, it's only 80 seconds and a half instead of 120 seconds. So that's really good for me. And I can see that it has a lot of potential to be using uh, going forward. So in, in race, in fractal, in dungeons, and so on and so forth. I see that it has a lot of potential and I'm very pleased to have this one. Um, other than that, CC skill of the Necromancer, the Flash Golem will be will still be one of your strongest, right? Uh, because the Golem has the charge, and the sh and the charge does reduce a lot of CC bar on the particular target. And so, situational, I will be swapping to the Black Lens, um, but otherwise, I'll be using the Flash uh, Golem to tackle the uh, CC. All the changes that I have made for the Necromancer, including the uh, the axe rework of the skill, uh, rework skill. Where is it? Yeah, the axe rending claws, uh, gasling claws, and unholy feast, and same with the dagger, and so on and so forth. But because I am using the scepter, and also the great soul for the condition damage, the reason why I'm using the scepter is because the scepter. As you know, apply the bleeding and also it has the ability to apply three stack of bleeding in the second skill and also for the torment. And in the dagger up hand, you have the ability to transfer the condition damage to the target foe and also uh, applying the bleeding as well for your last skill or the dagger off hand. So dagger, I'm sorry, not the dagger, but the scepter dagger combination is still designed uh, for many scenario. Situational, I'll be using the um, Warhorn and now situational, I'll be using my uh, Great Sword for the ability of converting the condition damage uh, from the boons on the target. So that's it for me. And yeah, I, I know that this video of the Necromancer is quite short and I know that some of you already sent me a message asking me what do you think about the epidemic. But because the epidemic has, again, let me let me rephrase on, I'm sorry, not not, not rephrase, but let me um, summarize all my thoughts about this. At the moment, there's a lot of changes going on with the epidemic, and I don't think it would be appropriate for me to comment on the skill right now. So I will leave down the comments at a later time when I, when they, you know, finalize the fixes with the epidemic and by that time i will have I'll, I'll give you my final thoughts on that one so apologies but yeah there's a lot of uncertainties going on with the skill at the moment and i don't know exactly you know exactly what's going on with the skill either so i will leave it for, for the later time when i have more uh, information coming in and when they finalize uh, the epidemic skill that's when i will give my final thoughts for that reason, I will conclude the video right now and I will be moving on to the next class. The thief in this update has been receiving a significant buff to the poison condition damage tab. And so because of that, uh, I think it will be more appropriate for me to go into uh, this one a little bit in depth compared to the other ones. So let me just read off the path so that I don't misinform anybody. Thief, the damage, the daredevil staff functions as a strong weapon a strong AOE weapon, but Core Thieves lacks good ways to deal with large groups. 
So in this update, we are tuning up the short bows to be a stronger range AOE weapon. Additionally, we are making a small change to unload to make it more effective as a damage tool when you can ensure that your target will stand still. Unload is part of a pistol uh, rotation. Finally, we are looking at updates to the Deadly Arts line that emphasize poison use to help establish more defined ways to play based on the traits that you have selected or sorry you, that you select now in summary from reading that patch there are three things that i have made the first one is uh, changes to the pistol i consider that to be a minor uh, because condition damage save in general pve you are using uh, short bow and dagger dagger so the second change that I have made is in relation to the short bow and the third and the final change that I have made that has a significant impact is for the deadly arts. Now, let me just go through the deadly arts changes first. The first thing that I have made is increase the amount of poison condition damage stacked from your um, deadly arts straight line by having the potent poisons. Previously, in my other videos, I have also mentioned that, you know, potent poison will be a benefit to have because it's increased your poison durations and poison deal increased damage. Now, this time, they make it one additional upgrade and that is increase the uh, poison condition damage stacks for others um, deadly art threats. So as you can see in here that See in this one, expose weakness, deal more damage if your target has a condition. This one, panic strike, which is the upgrade that I have made for this attribute. So in addition to its previous effect, the trait now get causes you to apply one stack of poison for four seconds to foe that you immobilize. So when you immobilize the foe, you will inflict two condition, two poison condition number stacks instead of one. So let me just, yeah, so you can see that one condition number stack. This one apply two instead from having that. So that's really good. Now the dagger training, dagger attacks have a chance to poison enemies. The chance on a hit is 33% and the poison that you have is two stacks instead of one. So immediately, as you can see for yourself that you have the ability to potentially apply for a stack of condition damage and that's not including the serpent torch which is coming for a touch which is coming from the stealing aspect and the steal is your special action key f1 and whenever you activate this you will immediately apply three stacks of poison so three potentially four so that's in total you have seven and that's really good now the next change that i have made for the uh, short bow is making it more ideal for AoE. As you can see in here in the short bow, right, you have the ability to bounce the target from your first auto attack skill. Now, the trick shot, according to this patch, increase number of bounces to three. Now, deal 25% increase in damage to poison foes, so that you now have the ability to um, inflict, I mean, like, sorry, not inflict, but attack more target in the wider range compared to the previous effect without the without the upgrade so the number of the damage increased 25 percent that is you know this is good but it's more tailored to the physical damage and the number of bounces which is what i like because the more that you attack the more mobs that you attack the more loot that you will receive at the end of the day so you know more loot more money for you always good the next one that i have upgrade is the detonate cluster increase the number of bombs to four so detonate cluster is the AOE skill and that inflict the bleeding condition damage to nearby foes and having this one right here you shot and then you spread it around so as you can see that increase the number of spreading around by four you have the ability to uh, spread to more targets and also dealing more bleeding to those targets as well and also like i said the more damage the more mobs that you attack the more loot for you at the end of the day so nobody you know um nobody you know like anybody likes having more loot right nobody doesn't like it so that's what i like to think so the last one choking gas increase damage by 200 percent. yes you read that right i mean like you heard me right increase damage by 200 percent. this skill now briefly days falls with five or more stacks of poison every pulse 
The same fold cannot be dated for more than once every second. I like it. This is ridiculously good. What that means is that you are now have the ability to AOE interrupt up to five targets in a single spot. So as you can see in here that I shoot, right? Those, like if those mobs or enemies standing on that on that spot right here, and if they have five or more stacks of poisons, I will have the ability to dice them for half a second. Half a second doesn't mean much, but if they are in the middle of casting a skill and you interrupt them, that is ridiculously good and I like it. And this is your AOE. This is your AOE interrupts. And you know, that that's just that, that's just so good. That's just so good. I like it. And as you can see, aside from this one, you also have the ability to have your uh, Parcelic Venom, which is one of your Elix spells that you can share to other allies and they will also have the ability to interrupt and also stun the target as well in the form of turning them into stone uh, status. So yeah, that's it um, for some of the changes. Now, those are good changes. Those are really good changes that I like to see for the Thief. Now, because they have made poisons more effective uh, in the form of, you know, having extra condition damage stacks and also making the short bow more viable. I'm sorry, not more viable, more effective against multiple enemies. I think that it will be a good idea for me to give you guys a different variety of playstyle. And by that, I imply on the fact that if you look at my specialization right now, sorry, that's not the one. Yeah. This is the one I'm using right now. If you look at my specialization right now and you compare it with my and you compare to my previous videos that I have made, you can see that there is a different specialization that I used previously. The reason for that is obviously I am now not using the Deadly Trapper anymore because I can see that there's potential to utilize myself uh, tailored to the applying the condition damage stacks instead of having you know others. And in particular, I understand that having might is good, but having condition damage stacks on the targets or multiple targets is always preferred, in my personal opinion. And also, if I'm doing the meta events, right, chances are other people will be giving me their might. So having that, uh, having extra might and also sacrificing all of my condition damage in the form of my Venom utility is not something that I you know, think it would be a good idea. So for that reason, I swapped to the Panic Strike instead. Second one is the Shadow Arts. Now previously I was using the Trickery and I was using these. So Trickery, card drops allow me, whenever I dodge, I inflict the bleeding and also I increase my maximum incident, uh, initiative. And also whenever I interrupt a target or multiple targets, then I apply the torment onto them. But what makes me want to what made me want to go for the trickery initially was this one right here, lit attacks. Increase the damage and condition damage per initiative spend still recharges faster. So at the maximum amount you have 15% of the maximum damage increase. However, uh, the la this one right here, you don't actually have a lot of interruptions uh, for the thief. Uh, yes, you do have the interruptions uh, in the form of basilic venom. You do have the interruption in the form of the choking gas, but then they are infrequent. And for that reason, I think it would be more appropriate for me to um, use the other specialization instead that enhance my survivability when I'm doing the meta events or when I'm you know in the open map doing the open map contents. And the last one is this one right here. Stealing applies confusion. Yes, I understand that confusion can be uh, can be a very useful condition damage to inflict on the target. However, because as I said, this patch is favor poisons and because of that I like to just swap to the shadow arts and increase in my venom effectiveness from this thread light right here. So what does this one do? Well, obviously this one allows you to reduce the recharge of uh, your venoms. And as you can see in here that you have 30 seconds of venom, right? 30, like 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and this one 36 seconds, and this one 40 seconds. Having swapped to this leeching venoms, you are not only siphon the life, but also the damage as well, but also you also reduce the recharge of your venom skill by 20%. And so as you can see in here, reduce the recharge of your Venom skill by 6 
seconds is a significant amount and I like having that instead of the trickery yeah and also the venom's uh, the venom utility skill it does have the ability to share it to your allies the number of target that being affected by this is five yeah as you can see in here the number of targets five the number of attacks that you can inflict on the target is six so ideally you can have six poison condition damage stack on this and that is why i prefer to have this one to reduce in the reach out cooldown so i can pump out more and so that is my intention and hence that is the reason why i went with the shadow arts to further add on to that one from time to time if i need it i can swap to stealth and stealth um, i will have to sacrifice my ice drake venom and i sacrifice that to swap to the shadow refuge whenever i'm in stealth i will have the reduce in the reach uh in the reduce in the damage inflicted onto me as you can see in here whenever i'm in stealth i have a damage reduction by 10 percent damage reduction by 20 percent and also the cell skill lasts longer and uh, whenever i revive an ally it's also stealth me as well me and my allies as well so as you can see in here potentially i can have the reduction in the damage by 35 percent from this and from that provided that if i steal the boons from the enemy they have no boons so they don't you know damage me uh sorry if they don't have the boons they don't have the extra damage inflicted on me so yes when i uh, when the enemies don't have the boons reduce incoming damage but when i have the style as well that is another 25 percent damage reductions so stealth is really good 25 damage reductions then if if your enemies don't have any boon uh, don't have any boons then that's a further 10 10 percent decrease in the damage and so in the open maps there are a lot of mobs that do not have any boons onto them and because of that incoming damage inflicted on you will be reduced and this is really good for open maps and in general pve um, that I like to use from now on uh, to increase my survivability and but mainly because I swapped to this one is because of this just to make it very clear so all the variations are that I also consider is this one right here so now again I'm using this one is because of the swiftness so whenever I you know want to travel from one play to the others I prefer to have the swiftness to increase my movement speed so that I can reduce the time travel but other than that if I am facing a single target or I'm fighting a boss in the meta events then in that case I prefer to have the impaling lotus because the impaling lotus whenever I dodge I will uh, whenever I dodge like this I will fire a dagger and that dagger will inflict bleeding and torment onto that target and so increase my overall damage from having this but again uh, it's just a matter of preference so uh, let me just summarize uh, let me just summarize if i'm doing the open map and if i need to travel from one place to the other i will use the dash and if i if i'm facing a single target in a meta event particularly in the boss in the boss fight then i will be using the impaling lotus yeah so yeah that's pretty much coming from me um other than that i can also recommend to use this one as well if you want to have a permanent increase in movement speed in that case i will be using the impaling lotus but it's entirely up to you so overall i'm very pleased uh for the thief now that the poison condition damage of the thief and the build itself is more effective uh can it be rival to the berserker build i doubt it um it is good for open maps and also for the meta event but for high-end content the berserker build is more ideal because it's the damage is significantly uh you know more compared to they can achieve a significantly more damage compared to the poisons damage but overall it's a fun build to play and it's a fun you know getting away from the berserker build and also let let me just go ahead and show you my um my runes so previously i recommend you know uh i recommend superior rune of or i recommend superior rune of of uh, rata sum if you are on a budget but ideally if you want to maximize your poison condition damage i think superior rune of thorns would be the ideal to go for because it increases your condition damage poison durations and also whenever you are hit by a poison foe you gain a 50 condition damage for 60 seconds on top of whatever have been provided to you so potentially you're gonna have 225 
So yeah, as you can see, 25 plus 50, that's 75, and plus another 100, so that's 175, and plus another 50, so that's 225. So that is a significant increase in your condition damage, and that's something that I would use for my condition damage bill of the thief. Alright, so thank you, and I'll be moving on to the next class.